Taurus, great to see you just in time and welcome to your Taurus April 2021 reading and forecast. I'm Nigel St. James. For those of you who are only stopping by for the first time, great to see the subscribers back again. Much love and affection to you as always. Now look, um, this deck actually was given to me by, look, it was a former lover from a long time ago and uh, before I had children. And uh, anyway, we've amazingly we've remained good friends and she's a witch and she did the usual traditional thing when providing a tarot deck is to wrap it in string or rope and she said this deck is one which is very difficult to read but you'll be able to do it Nigel and I've gone through it and it does have a resonance with me so we'll see what it has to say for you now shall we so I'm going to pull five cards because that's all you need to find out what is in store for you in Taurus April 2021, the lovers, that is incidentally, this is the page of pentacles, page of cups. Interesting, interesting indeed. And here we have a nice fire card there. What is that? The ace of wands. <laughs> That's a great uh, card, I think. Where is it though? Next to the page of cups and below the lovers well let me just see what vibe is beginning to come through it'll be here in just a second and here we have the ten of swords that's a fascinating card in this spread we'll look to see what it has to say for us now come and have a look at the beautiful imagery on these cards with me or well, they talk to me and i'll share with you what they mean fascinating spread of cards now Oh, incidentally, I have read uh, private readings for a number of Taurians in the last month, haven't I? And um, if you'd be interested in a one-on-one, -on -one, one hour clairvoyant reading with me, then just check out the information in the description box below. The Lovers opposite the Ten of Swords. Major Arcana, this energy is on the way out. I'm gonna deal with this one first because I think it has something to say with for you in particular and for you not to despair this is the sign this thing here that's the sign of air and here's a rather bedraggled looking figure with a bunch of swords sticking into it and here is the glyphs of the sun in gemini the sun in gemini well i think it's the third decan of gemini actually that the sun is in here and that third Gemini is, is the, and the third decan is that last 10 degrees of the sign, the 20 to 30 degrees of the sign. And in Gemini's case, it would be the 12th to the 20th of June. This means that it's changeable, that things are changing, that things are movable, changeable, and it's moving out. The other thing is this, uh, this 10 of swords, the tens are very unstable in general. And this is going to move into the energy flowing through this is going to move into the ace of pentacles in the suit which is all about good things but here we have the sun in gemini well look that can in my estimation be difficult sometimes because gemini disperses the energy of the sun and it also seeks to disperse your focus this is in the suit of swords which is about the mind and the focus here is entirely on in on the intellect here and it is unstable and the 10 as i say is about to go into the the next suit i think what this is doing is is that it reminds you that there is a destructive power associated with negative thinking which can disrupt the harmony and balance of your heart. Um, there's also the case here that you know that you get wisdom through pain and loss. When did you ever learn anything when something actually went really well? It's only when sometimes things go badly or you think that things are going badly. And I think what you need to do here is look at where fears in your life now lie and change the way that you are dealing with them. Maybe someone's got a broken heart or you're remembering a broken heart or you have some feeling of guilt or despair over breaking someone else's heart or over a previous relationship or over a physical procedure 
which, which you've undertaken, which offends your conscience. But the message that's coming up to me loud and clear with respect to this card, and as I say, all the other cards here are so good, and I'll get to this one next. The energy here is coming here to remind you of something about things that you've been thinking about, maybe things that you've been thinking about for many years. And it is this, that despite what you may believe, you can disappoint yourself or you can disappoint people and still be good enough. You can make mistakes and still be capable and talented. You can let people down and still be worthwhile and deserving of love. Everybody has disappointed someone they care about. Everyone messes up, lets people down, makes mistakes. Not because we are inadequate or fundamentally inept or stupid, but because we are imperfect and fundamentally human and expecting anything different is just setting yourself up for failure forever because nobody is perfect and it's time now to get on with life and understand that forgiveness is there for you and as if to draw that message even clearer is this card which comes on the same line as it and belief this lover's card. And let's have a look at it. It is the one of flames or the one of wands, otherwise known as the ace of wands in the many decks, I guess. The Lord of the root of powers of fire. And I think what's interesting here is that I suspect people who could be a Leo or a Virgo or a Cancer may have something to do with you here. Look, this is actually the second highest energy card, the sun, the major arcana of the sun being the highest. Well, this is the second highest energy card in the deck. And the card shows the energies which arise after all blocks have been removed. All right, so remove these blocks. You've got a clean slate. All security and certainties you've been clinging to will be shaken and destroyed by the impact of the energies which are breaking through now. You've got great things coming your way. Now, if all obstacles are out of the way, renewal in all areas and all levels of life takes place. The revitalizing power fills your entire being with new light. Now it is important for the free flowing energies to have a creative outlet. You can use the energy only if you have a goal towards which you can direct it. The next step after releasing blocks is to find the right framework in which to set this energy to work. You are full of power and energy now. Engage fully in discovering where and how and where you want to use it. Now, I think that this can also recognize a, a time in your life when there is a real breakthrough moment of insight, really, where you feel inspired and motivated to move your life forward. And I think a big opportunity as a result will open up for you. You have the possibility, because the aces are about potential, of tapping into your latent potential this is the perfect time to draw upon your imagination and make your dreams come true. What attracts you the most? What gives you the most pleasure? In what framework could you realize your dreams? Say this to yourself. I express my energy and power openly. Now there's something else which is coming through with this energy to say to you, and it is this, that there is nothing you cannot be, there is nothing you cannot do, there is nothing you cannot have. You are the most magnificent, the most remarkable, the most splendid being God has ever created. For who could reject such wondrous magnificence? But you do not know who you are, and you think you are a great deal less. You are your own rule maker, 
and you are the only one who can assess how you are doing. All you see in the world is your idea about it. Life will take off for you when you choose for it to. An idea becomes a thought. A thought becomes a word. Say it out loud. Words have power and they echo all throughout eternity. A word becomes an action. And if you are going to do it, then just start. And having started, go all the way. Do it. Do it. Do it. Seize the opportunity before you now. Rejoice in it. And let no power on earth take it from you. I think this is also a time when you will have emotional freedom and in which jealousy will be conquered because here we have the page of cups and let's have a look at it. What does the symbology say to us? This is earth and this is water. So she is the earthly part of water esoterically. Well, what does that mean? Well, I call her the princess of the palace of the floods. And this young woman represents the earthy part of water and in particular the faculty of crystallization. She represents the power of water to give substance to idea, to support life and to form the basis of chemical combinations which themselves turn into life. Now, the character of this person it can be a man, because court cards are different, but I'll refer to it as a woman for the obvious reason. The character of this young woman is infinitely gracious, all sweetness, all voluptuousness, gentleness, kindness, and tenderness. Someone who could be a Scorpio, a Libra, or a Sagittarius is what I'm getting here. She lives in a world of romance, in the perpetual dream of rapture. And superficially, she might be thought to be selfish and lazy, but that is a false impression because she goes about her work silently and effortlessly. Yeah, emotional freedom, jealousy conquered. Got a real sense here of the Pacific Ocean as well. This is talking about a romantic person who has those qualities of sweetness and gentleness that I referred to there. But she has great depth because I get that feeling of the Pacific Ocean around her. So it could be someone who lives along the Pacific or in the Pacific Ocean or on the land in the Pacific, but can often be carried away by romance and have her eyes shut to the environment. And as a result can be thought to be something of a dreamer and not engaging in life. Now she is dependent on others, but she gives a lot in return. And what this says is that you are quite entitled to depend on other people at this time because you always give a lot to other people. And I think that this is saying to you particularly that you should trust your feelings and perceptions because you are on the right path. Is there anything else preventing you from being fully free? you now have the opportunity to let go of that as well. Imagine that you are surrounded by water and uh, dancing the dance of salvation and freedom with light flowing movements. And say this to yourself, the more I love myself, the more I can share with others. And while we're on the pages, let's have a look at this one here. The page, she looks like Earth. Yes, the page of pentacles. The page of pentacles. And let you have a look. Here we have the sign for Earth and Earth. So she is the earthy part of Earth. Now I say it's a she, it looks like a she to me. For me, she is the princess of the echoing hills, the rose of the palace of the Earth. Now, Taurus is all around here at the moment. You could also have things to do with a Gemini or an Aries. Now, at this time, you will be beautiful and strong, pregnant with life, generous, kind and benevolent. You might also hear of, of a birth or a pregnancy, you know. 
she can be interpreted as the mother of a new identity, an idea or a concept even, as far as I'm concerned. This is indicating to me that this is a time when you will be following your will or true purpose in life. So this energy is really about you getting in touch with that most important aspect and protecting it, just as this woman protects the environment around her. Now, I do get the feeling of a physical pregnancy that you may hear of here, but there's certainly the birth of ideas. I think you're going to be coming up with some great ideas, and certainly it's going to be a very productive time for you. It's going to be a productive time for you after what may have seemed like something of a barren stretch. Avoid conflict if you can during this period. This is a particularly good card for people involved in domestic duties as well. This tree here, I think, represents the unifying of spirit with matter. When the new is given birth, the light is brought to earth. The energy of the cosmos becomes visible through human life and deeds and that energy impregnates all with its divine quality. The creation which takes place in darkness and stillness will emerge and spread the divine, the light, sharing it once again with the mother who gave it birth. Something new is entering your life, so prepare yourself. What do you have to do in order to be ready for something new to come into your life? Maybe um, breathe gently, close your eyes and feel the quality of newness now entering your life and say to yourself, I am now ready for the new beauty in my life. Finally, where do we go? It is finally, isn't it? Yes, it's here to the major arcana, the first card you drew, which is that of the lovers. Now, do you think it's rather interesting imagery on this, isn't it? First of all, Gemini, right? Gemini, you might recall, is um, often referred to symbolically as the twins. Well, going back, uh, uh, that comes from the Greek influence from about 300 BC, Greek times of, of astrology. The earlier, the earlier forms of Gemini actually were two people. There was a man carrying a club and a woman carrying a lute, a lute like a sort of a small guitar. Those things, lutes were found and taken, well, there have been discoveries of them, and they feature in art from about three and a half thousand years ago. So they've been around for a long time. So the original sign of Gemini was a man with a club and a woman with a lute. Interesting, hey? Here we have Cupid with his bow, and here we have, um, I assume, the Hierophant from the Major Arcana acting as a sort of a celebrant. In a ceremony, could it be a marriage? I couldn't really say. The jury is still out on that. Between a man who, with the crown of thorns and a woman with the crown of thorns. Now, the man definitely has a look in the Western tradition, at least from Western Europe, of the Jesus figure. Would that be Mary Magdalene? But the, the, the symbol, the symbology of the crown of thorns is, of course, that when you descend into matter, because, of course, you pre-existed, when you descend into matter, everybody is unified before they come into matter. When you come into matter, you become separated. You become separate. You also become open to receive um, torment and trial and adversity and these things. And these are the things which you come for and you actually want to experience. That's why you've come here. That's what the Crown of Thorns recognizes there. The You may not be able to make this out. This says dissolution. Well, dissolution to dissolve means to separate, really, doesn't it? To separate. What can we say here, Gemini? Now, there's also, this is an interesting thing to have a look at here. Here is an ancient biblical symbol. 
and that's called Zayin. Now, in ancient biblical Hebrew, Zayin is the seventh letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Now, the thing is, how best can I explain the spirituality behind the ancient biblical Hebrew letters? Imagine the light of the divine, just filling everything, just white light. Imagine then you wanted a projector to be able to focus that light. Well, the, the biblical Hebrew letters are the projector. And that light going through the projector shows what? Well, in this case, this projector, the seventh letter, Zayin, it's shaped like a sword and it's the symbol of spirit, of sustenance and struggle, which is, of course, what we see here. It also represents, as the seventh letter, the, the seventh day uh, of the week in Jude, in the Abrahamic religions, the, the day of rest. Uh, which completes the process of, of the six days of creation, at least in the first creation story in the book of Genesis in chapter one. Uh, there are two creation stories in Genesis, as you'll see if you read the book. But the first one is about the earth being created in six days or everything being created in six days and then God resting on the seventh. So it includes the six days and six directions of creation. It includes the six directions of physical reality, but it also stands as a unique seventh principle or energy. That is the spirit which activates everything that is physical. The Zayin, if you like, what's being shown through this lens, it is, it is shown that that spirit is the source of all movement it is an impregnating principle which activates the creation. Now, be that as it may, I, I might do a separate set of videos on what the biblical Hebrew letters mean that you come across in tarot. I won't go into it in detail now. I mean, I call this card the children of the voice divine, the oracle of the mighty gods. And the meaning of the energy, and particularly in the position that you've drawn it in there, the meaning centers around the reconciliation of opposites. It's Mercury ruling Gemini here with dragon's head uh, or the um, Rahu the, in Vedic astrology, the north node of the moon. That is those things which you've got to set right. This is saying that you need to look at all angles before making a decision, I think. You could be a mediator or a peacemaker you need to look at harmony in relationships. There may well be the need for you, I think, to make a major life choice on the direction ahead of you. Now, I must say, there could also be a mutual attraction and a sexual connection associated uh, for somebody here. But again, this is a major arcana card, this card, the lovers, and so it's not going to be a one night stand, but definitely it's about love attraction, approaching people, connection, the union of opposites through love and becoming conscious through relationship. It could also be at something of a crossroads here or going into a project or a business venture with somebody else. Now, for someone, it means falling in love, I think. You may hear of engagement or someone can actually make a commitment to a relationship. This lover's card here represents two opposites which yearn for and are attracted to one another. This duality, which is reflected in every aspect of existence, is in reality experienced in the relationships between man and woman. But of course, the gay and lesbian communities can make the necessary adjustment there. That's fine because Everybody is equal in the eyes of the divine. So every individual, every man and every woman contains the duality of male and female. And these express themselves in different and often contradictory personal characteristics, don't they? Now this may refer to a wonderful and exciting love relationship, a current relationship that either deepens Although I have to say, I have to say it can also mean ending.
but new methods for personal growth and integration of your own opposing aspects, they present themselves as you turn towards and interact with, with a partner. What do you seek in the people you love? What comprises a fulfilling relationship for you? Say this to yourself. I enjoy working with people of all ages. I have inherent people skills. I am emotionally sure about what I need or don't need or want from a relationship. I am now ready to meet the partner I have always longed to meet. Or for those in committed relationships, I now look forward to further deepening the strength of the bond between us. That's it for you this month. Well, it was my pleasure and privilege to provide that reading for you. Isn't it interesting, you know, the things that come through with tarot cards? You know how one card can have so many things that it wants to get across to you. It's, uh, it never ceases to amaze me and I'm, 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 I'm confident that you will have enjoyed it as well. Look, and if you do enjoy it, please do me the favour and hit the like button. Apparently it does things for the YouTube gods and it would, it would help uh, more people see what we, what we ourselves enjoy. But listen, in the meantime though, there's one thing that I want you to remember and to remember it always, and that is this, that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Until then, it's bye for now.